This is Integrated Math, Mr. Mellinger's class. This is the solution set for 1.02 sampling. Okay, so this is a, a fairly simple lesson. It's just learning dif different ways of um, sampling for to collect data so that you can do then do the statistical analysis on it and learn whatever you're trying to learn. So this is a simple uh, matching here. So it, let's read the first one. You're in charge of school activities. You want to know what activity students would prefer to participate in during the school year. You decide to put the name of each student in the, in the school into a big bowl. You draw 100 names and ask those students to respond to a survey about the activities they prefer. So that's just simply a random, a simple random survey, just randomly picking students out of a hat. So that would be this one right here. Okay, next, uh, same set, you're, you're in charge of school activities, so you assign each student a school number, in the school a number, you randomly select a starting number um, among the first 10 numbers and then select every 10th student. So you're, you're introducing some kind of a systematic way of choosing the students, it's not totally random, so that would be a systematic random sample. And finally, same situation, you use the roles from each homeroom class. So you first you're limiting it to homeroom classes. And then you go through each homeroom class drawing two names from each class. And then you survey those students. So there's two passes or two cuts. First you choose homeroom classes. You limit the, you limit the population of students down to just homeroom classes. <clears throat> and then there's a second cut, you pick two students from each homeroom class. So that's stratified. In other words, there's two layers to that survey. Picking the homeroom class and then picking students within that homeroom class. So that would be this one right here. All right, let's do some more of these. Okay, still in charge of school activities, you get a list of all homeroom classes and randomly select five classes. You go to each class and you survey all the students. So that's similar to the last one, except you only have take one pass. You don't, you pick the homeroom classes and then that's it. You survey everybody. You don't pick two students or five students. So that would be an example of a cluster. Cluster is a group. Like a class, okay? So that's a cluster random sample. Next one, uh, you stand in the cafeteria uh, in the cafeteria during lunch break and you ask students if they would be willing to participate in the survey. That's called a convenient sample. That's the one where you actually do the survey. And then finally, you make a lot of copies of the survey about the activities that students prefer and you put them on a table outside the cafeteria. Students can choose to take the survey and drop the responses in a big box and that's a volunteer. So you don't actually take that one, you just hope that people will walk up to the table and do that. Okay, let's see. Now I mixed some questions just to save space. So we're going from this one to number seven. So identify the situation as survey, observational study, or an experiment. So let's kind of let's kind of take the survey is something that you would actually have human beings fill out. They actually have to actively fill it out. An observational study is something where you just watch something happen. So it doesn't even have to involve human beings. It could involve cars or um, you know how many cars drive down El Cajon Boulevard of a certain type. That would be observational. An experiment tends to be more controlled. You have everything of very precise. You know, you know what the variables are outside. There's nothing outside that can interfere with um, your experiment. This tends to be something you would do with inanimate objects or with uh, science, uh, like uh, physical physics or chemistry, as opposed to people. You can do experiments with people. They tend to have a lot of flaws in them, though, when you try to control uh, try to control people and what outside factors affect them. So it says to determine a new pain if a new pain medication is effective, researchers randomly assign two groups of people to use a pain medication. In group one is a placebo. A placebo is a fake medicine. In other words, people think they're taking the medicine, but they're not really taking it. Why would they do that? Because sometimes people can cure themselves psychologically. If they think that they're taking something that's gonna cure whatever their illness is, it can actually happen, they found. 
um, it could, and just psychologically they're able to cure themselves. So um, that's what a placebo is. It's basically a pill that looks like the, say it's a pill that they're taking, um, it looks like the pill that has the medicine, but it doesn't do anything. It might just be made out of, you know, sugar and starch and, and nothing, nothing that really is a medicine. Okay, in group two, both groups are asked to rate their pain and results are compared. Okay, that would be a, um, that would be a survey because you're actually asking them. If you had instead um, drawn blood from them and seen, analyzed their blood and found that group one's blood looked a certain way and group two's blood had certain characteristics, that would be an experiment. But this one, you're actually asking for their opinion. And, um, and that can be difficult because some people might have more tolerance to pain than others. And so uh, they might say, oh, the, it really worked when somebody else with the same degree of pain may say, I know it didn't work. I, I still I still am in pain. But you're asking an opinion. That's a survey. OK. OK, let's go back to some more of the matching. You're interested in finding out uh, the percent of residents in the city that have experienced a robbery in the past year. Using the city property records, you assign each residence a number. You use a random number generator to give you a list of numbers. You look up the police reports for each residence. Okay, now this one could be tricky. It could trick you into thinking it's systematic because you're talking about numbers like we did um, with picking every 10th student, but that's not picking every 10th student or every 10th residence. It's simply, instead of putting the, the addresses in a hat, you're using a computer random number generator. It means it just randomly puts out numbers. There's no system to it. So that means this would be a simple random survey. Again, the reason is there's not a system as to how you're picking the houses. You're, it's the same as pulling numbers out of a hat or pulling students' names out of a hat or pulling the addresses out of a hat, except you're letting a computer do it rather than picking them out of a hat. So it's a random number generator. That's the key is there's a random number. It's not every 10th residence or every 20th residence or anything like that. So that would be a simple random uh, sample. Okay, you want to know the average number of hours that high school students spend playing video games. You randomly select 20 high schools in the state and then ask all the seniors at each of the 20 high schools about their video games. So you're doing two passes or two cuts here. First of all, you're selecting 20 high schools. So that's your first cut. You're not going to do all the high schools, just 20. And then once you do the, hunt, the 20, you're only going to choose the seniors. You're not going to choose all the students. So there's two passes or two cuts there. High schools, which high schools you choose, and then which group of students within each high school. So that would be a stratified random sample right there. All right, down here. Okay, identify the situation as a survey, observational study, or experiment. Again, survey, you ask people, Observational, you don't have to ask anybody, you just watch what happens and record it. Experiment means it's very controlled. You keep any outside variables or influences out of the experiment. Okay, officials want to determine if raising the speed limit from 75 to 80 miles an hour will in, have an impact on safety. To determine this, they watch a stretch of highway where um, where the speed limit, which we where the speed limit is 75 and they see how many accidents there are. They then observe the number of accidents over a period of time on the same stretch of highway for a speed limit of 80 miles per hour. They then compare the differences. Okay, so this is observational. So it would be this one. They're not asking anybody questions, so it's not a survey. It's not an experiment because it's really not, they're not setting it up under controlled circumstances. They're simply watching what happens under normal circumstances out on the out on that highway. So that would be observational. Okay, let's go back to some matching. So an auto analyst uh, is conducting a satisfaction survey sampling a list of 10,000 new car buyers. The list includes 2,500 Ford buyers, 2,500 GM buyers, 2,500 Honda buyers, and 2,500 Toyota buyers. The analyst selects a sample of 400 car buyers by randomly sampling 100 uh, buyers of each brand. So what is that? Well, first of all, you're making a first cut and you're selecting four different models and you're, and you're selecting 2,500 from each of those that purchased each of those four different models. 
among the 2,500 from each group, you're then limiting it because you don't want to do that many surveys. It's too many. So you're limiting it down to 400 total. That's 100 buyers from each group. So first 2,500 of each model of car um, or each make of car. And then within that 2,500, you're actually picking 100 from each. So you're picking 100 Ford, 100 GM, 100 Honda, 125. So there's two different passes or cuts. So that would be a stratified sample. A shopping mall management company would like to know the average amount that shoppers in the mall spend during their visit. They post two survey takers near one of the exits who ask shoppers to tell them what they spend as they leave the mall. Okay, so that I think you would know is convenience. Anytime you you're taking a survey, standing at a location and taking a survey. That's like the students standing in the cafeteria. Okay, a restaurant owner wants to find out the average number of dishes ordered at each table served on Friday evenings, their busiest time. She decides to collect and analyze every fifth receipt of the night starting at 6 p.m. Well, there's two possibilities here. <clears throat> Here's the every fifth receipt. That kind of tells you <coughs> it's systematic. But she's also, first of all, limiting it to just Friday evenings, not all of her customers. So um, you could consider that a first cut variable, um, that the Friday evenings, and then the second cut is every fifth receipt. Or you could say, well, Friday evenings is just what she's interested in. Um, she's really not eliminating the other day. She's only interested in Friday evenings and then every fifth receipt. I'm gonna say that this is two passes or two cuts. First, she chose the night of the week. Second, she chose that she was going to pick every fifth receipt. So that would be stratified. I would consider that stratified. Possibly the system showed the answer is systematic. I consider that stratified. There's two different criterion that she's putting on who she's going to sample. Night of the week and every fifth receipt. All right, let's keep moving on. Okay, again, they want to know survey, observational, or experiment to determine if a new sandwich on the menu is preferred more than the, orig uh, than the original. The manager of the restaurant takes a random sample of customers that have tried both sandwiches and asks them which sandwich they, uh, they like best. Well, that's clearly a survey. They're asking opinions of that. Um, he can't tell just by watching them eat the two sandwiches which one they like the best. And, you know, they're not going to jump up and down with the one they like the best. So you can't do it observational. An experiment, he's not really setting up an experiment. He's just watching. He's just, um, he, or excuse me, he's just asking them. So it's not really an experiment. It's actually a real world situation. Okay, so that would be a survey. Okay, so we are on to number 10. Let me bring it down a little here. Number 10. Um, so again, they want to know survey, observational, or experiment. A newspaper wants to know what its customer satisfaction is. It randomly selects 500 uh, customers and asks them. So ask them. They could have put the word surveys them there. So that would be a survey. All right. Okay, they want you to write your own example of a survey. All right, so... Um, I'll just give you a quickie, but I want you to write a full sentence um, or two. All right. So, but I told you I'd give you all the answers here. So what's an example of survey? Um, you can ask students what their favorite class is. Okay. Now that's not a satisfactory answer. I want you to then say, okay, which is your favorite class? Math, history, English, science in other words you you're actually writing the survey i'm just giving you the idea for it okay next write your own example of an observational study okay i gave this one in class um stand on el cajon boulevard and identify id means identify makes of cars so you're just sitting there watching, you're marking down every time a Ford goes by or every time a Toyota goes by. But I want, but you're supposed to write the survey, okay? Okay, cars, uh, and then write the different lists, okay? And number of times. Okay, next one. A example of an experiment. Okay, so an example of an experiment, one that we might do in chemistry, very simple one is... Uh, measure a cup of water, two cups of water, 
so they have both have exactly the same amount of water. Put one in the classroom and one outside in the sun for 24 hours and see how much they evaporate. How much water evaporates out of each of the cups. Whether the one that's out in the sun evaporates more than the one that's in the classroom. So that term is evaporation. It's when water just basically goes up into the atmosphere out of a cup. You've seen that happen. So that's a controlled experiment. And generally experiments are better for non-human types of activities like this. There's no humans involved. It's just kind of science. All right. Okay. Let's keep on. Okay, drag each example of a sample into the appropriate sample type. Now this is a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a weird question. These are not the results of the sample. This is how you designed the sample. Um, so this um, basically it's not a result, it's just how you designed it. So if this was say ninth, tenth, oops, I should draw that over a little. 11th, 12th grade uh, classes, and it could be English, math, whatever. If you see a pattern here, which you don't, these are kind of randomly all over the place. This would be a random sample. And this one seems to be kind of in layers, you notice. So this could be um, a 12th grade class, an 11th grade class, a 10th grade class, and this could be the top student in the class, the second top, the third top, the fourth, the fifth, like that. So you're you're doing two different uh, cuts of the sample. But stratified basically means layered like that. So that would be stratified. Okay, move on. How about this? Well, these look like classrooms, don't they? And there's one, there's a classroom, there's a classroom and you're picking everybody. It looks like you're picking everybody in the class there. So we're going to say that that's a cluster. Okay, and for this one, it looks like that if these, I don't know if these are grade levels or not, um, they could be, but it doesn't look like there's really any pattern there. They're just kind of random. They, don't, they look like the one on the previous page. So we're going to say that's simple random. <clears throat> okay, so that, that takes care of that one. And I think that takes care of all of them. So that is um, the assignment 1.02. This is going to be put up and um, we'll go on to 1.03. Have a good day.